something a little bit different, right? Because we've been seeing all these great things from the visual side, we've been seeing all these great things about designing, but what happens to the words? So, can anybody here tell me what this website is about? Anybody? Any idea? You can't tell me what this website is about because you don't know what it says. See, the thing here is, in order for us to be able to deliver the message from our brand, we need to have the right balance between visuals and words, because that's how we consume content. So, words are design. Because as much as layout, as much as interactions, as much as the dev and the code, words are part of it, because that is how we interact. Every single time that you look into a screen, words are there. Because if not, you don't understand what's happening. So, Scott Kuby has this great concept that he says that words are the most powerful design materials available. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, because I see nervous faces. Okay, so words are capable of translating very complex meanings into teeny tiny spaces. They load super fast. It's the fastest loading thing you'll find in the world. <laughs> Sorry, no, nothing loads faster than words. They're easy to manipulate, and they're very easy to transmit. But you know what is the best thing about words? Anybody? Whoa. The best thing about words is they already exist. You don't have to invent them. The only thing you need to do is use them. It's that simple. So, now that we have clear, and I don't see so many nervous faces, because today is about working together. It's not about seeing what, who's more important. This is the first thing I'm going to ask you. Please, 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 let this be the day that we forget Laura Mipson. Amen. the day that we realize that design, research, dev, and content start working together from the beginning, we not only make sure that our user experience is better, we can also make sure that our products and services become more accessible. So today, I'm going to show you and I'm going to share with you some very simple suggestions that come Monday morning, you can start implementing on your website. Are you ready? Cool. Let's go for it. So, in order to do this, we're going to do, I need all of you to do this very nice exercise with me. Close your eyes. <coughs> what do you see? <laughs> Nothing. Exactly. Exactly. For all of us, every time we browse the web, the text we see, the images we see, the nice gifts of cats we see, we use our eyes to see them. But what happens to people that can't see? What happens to people that relay heavily on text readers to be able to take that content in? They're only listening to words. Mm -hmm. See, the way they navigate is very different than the way we navigate because we can see a web page and we can see the full context, right? You see everything and you get the bigger picture. What happens with people that have visually impaired is they need to navigate by blocks or they need to navigate by sections. Right? So the thing is, it's sort of like this cartoon of like those blind scientists that they have a blindfold that in front of an elephant and one goes like, yep, this kind of looks like a tree trunk. And then it's like, no, 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 it's a hose. Or, oh, no, it looks like a broom. They're all in front of the same animal. But since they can only see one section, they can't see the bigger picture. This is a little bit how it feels to navigate when you're using a screen reader. Now, I need you to repeat this with me. Top down, left to right. Top down, left to right. One more time. Top down, left to right. This is the flow content works with a screen reader. So from now on, every single time you're designing and you're creating your content, follow that. Why is this important? 
because if you follow the same flow that a screen reader will read, everything will make much more sense for people that can't see your content. Next up, info, hints, tips, always before the action the user has to perform. Let's see an example. Your run-of-the-mill form. Hate them or love them, but we need them, right? So the screen reader will start reading, and then it'll read password. Then it'll read input field. But we have a problem here. Because the person will introduce their password not knowing that there are some things that they have to do before they can create a password. Which means it's a small frustration because they have to go back and redo that password, right? So, in order to help them out, we need to think about how we tell the system to read that on a screen reader. So this is the most accessible order that you can provide them, which is the label, the hint, then the field. <coughs> Pro tip, what actually shows on screen can be the whatever you, way you want it visually, that's fine. You just have to make sure that the focus when people are navigating with their keyboard is this. So now, I'm sorry, I'm trying to make my best screen reader voice here. It'll read password, then it'll read, your password must contain at least an uppercase, a number, a haiku, a hieroglyph, and a gang sign. And then it'll give you the input field. But see the difference? Now you know that you need to meet those requirements in order to have an OK password. Small change, big difference. Another thing we have to start avoiding also is check boxes that make something a rule that have text. Put that before the button if you can. If not, just make it read it before. Because what's going to happen here? Same thing. People will click, nothing will happen. Best case scenario, they are narrow. People will click, nothing will happen frustration start to build. And those are just two steps really close together in one form. But imagine if this, you have to do it every single day of your life. So put that before, or make it read it after. <coughs> Next up is be clear. Better just talked about language and how we can simplify that. And this is very, very useful because let's take the example of, for example, loading screen. Many companies try to be like funny and quirky and they try to be like hip and they'll tell you something like, wrapping up. <laughs> okay, great, sure, wrapping up, wrapping up what? <laughs> so this is a simple solution. You still can be quirky, you still can be funny, you can still be on brand voice. Just give them a little bit of extra content. We're finishing your order. Wrapping up. That makes sense, right? One more line of text. Okay, 404 pages are like a safari out there. Everybody's trying to do their thing, everybody tries to be funny, because at the end we're trying to mask that we have an error here. So, things you have to keep into account. Avoid just using an image, because screen readers don't pick it up. Avoid using words that give no context. So again, you close your eyes and you just let it do. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> I don't have any context. What's happening here? So make sure that every single time that you have an image and a text, the combination, if they're read separately, that they make sense. Because you need to tell your user what's happening now, and you also need to tell them what's happening later. So with 404s, always try to include the message within the text, and also give them a way out. And by, way out, by a way out, I mean back to home, a search bar, some information of related articles that they're looking for help. Because what happens here is if your microcopy leads them here and it feels like a dead end, you're not doing your job right. Alternative text. This one is a thing of beauty. See, every icon or image that you use should always come with an alternative text. I know it seems like a hassle, but here, carry on. When you set this during development, it doesn't have to show on screen, that's fine. But at least you give people using a screen reader an idea of, again, the full picture, right? So for example, this is your page. If you include the alt text, you have something as simple as image, toy robot. 
You don't have to do a thorough explain that it's an orange robot that looks from this. No, go straight to the point. What are you finding here? This is a win-win situation for most cases because it'll help people with screen readers. But if let's say your page doesn't load, you still have there. So we see and I read that. I understand what's there, and that's fine. So it's a win-win situation. So this particular case, all text, don't try to be funny. Don't try to be quirky. Please be clear, be concise, and be useful. This is not the place to be funny. And I love funny, so trust me, don't be here. So now, let, let's play a little game, right? We're talking about images, but what about, what about icons? Icons should always come accompanied <coughs> by an alt text. Why? Because if you don't, again, scream your voice. It'll say, link, image, button. What happens? Your user doesn't have any context, and what's worse, they don't know what they can do if they tap or they click on any of those. Now let's play a little game. For example, the first one. What could be an alt text for that? Anybody? Huh? This one. Yeah, localization. What else? Pin post. What could that be? Alarm. Time. Third one. Home. Fourth one. Yeah, last one. People. That took us less less than a minute, around 30, 45 seconds, to come up with ideas that are clear, concise, and useful, and that give us context of what's happening when people click on that. Was that hard? Anybody think that was hard? Raise fast. See? It's easy. Now, here comes the golden rule. Use live text. Okay? Because screen readers only read live text. This means any text that is part of an image or is an image in itself, a screen reader won't read it. So if the text on a button is an image, will it read it? If the label beneath an icon or a saved image is not live text, will it read it? No. And if the text on a 404 page is part of the image, it won't read it. So you have your very nice page, your very nice design, and then someone using a screen reader will actually just see this. <coughs> Instead of that. And last but not least, keep it simple. What do I mean by this? You have to think that the average person who consumes <coughs> content in English has the reading level of a sixth grader. That's around 11 or 12 years old. Can you remember your comprehension around those times? It was, it was okay, some were better than others. Yes, I agree, I agree. But it's very simple. So keep it like that way. What do I mean by this? Ditch Shakespeare. Go for Hemingway. Yes, really. If you have all these jars on the comes for marketing, if there's a simple synonym that you can use, boom, out, replace it. Because there's a quote from Sarah Richards who created content design, and she says, it's not about thumbing down. It's about opening up. And by opening up, she means it's making it more accessible. So when your content or your website is more accessible to more people, it's just easier to use. So, as you can see, with very small effort from our side, we can make a huge difference. So it's all about giving the information about the action. It's all about top, down, left, right, correct. And it's about being clear, and it's about using live text. So before I let you go, I'm going to give you a very quick tip that you can start using right now. Next time that you tweet and you use a GIF, <laughs> use alt text. Open brackets, GIF, and just describes what's happening there. So the person that's interacting with Twitter, they can read your message, but they can also understand the GIF, and they can share that smile with you. Thanks so much.